so there is very important work to be done, Nick, on counterterrorism. Always. There's there's very many important things, such as stopping terrorism. That's a pretty important thing. Mm. Could be done. Um, but not today. And not, not yesterday or the last five years or whenever, apparently. This, at least according to a new report that's come out, an independent inquiry into the prevent strategy, which mm. for foreigners is the key counterterrorism strategy for the UK. And it's really funny because the independent report is some guy who's not trying to gloss over the stuff. He just details, this was dumb. Don't know why you did this. Why did you give £10,000 to the Iranians? And just, it's just going through example after example of uh, mess ups and uh, also making a lot of Islamo leftists very, very mad because he's like, huh, you know that you know that Islamic terrorism thing? Maybe that has something to do with Islam. Mm. I don't know, hunch. But before we begin, we'll just mention some of the spy stuff that we've been through. So this is the book club Active Measures, which uh, was very good fun. I was just telling Nick about the story of the uh, fake magazines that the CIA and the KGB made for each other just to have a laugh, frankly. So do go and check that out. But otherwise, we shall begin with, let's say if we actually cared about counterterrorism, what would you do? First of all, you've got to identify the problem. Yep. Then you have to identify the players then you need to work out what motivates them to do what they need to do. Then I would split that up into different fields. So then I'd look at prevention. I'd look at propaganda. I'd look at early intervention. And I'd look at some enforcement. Off the top of my head, that's how I would... Could it be a reasonable place to start? Yeah. And the first and foremost being laying the land. What's going on? Hmm. What is actually happening? So if you wanted to do that, I would recommend the Global Terrorism Index. They release every single year. Uh, most people don't seem to know about them at all, but they're a really funny outlet because they're full of facts which are not happy for certain mm. people who want the world to be something that it's not. For example, you endlessly hear about the rise of the far-right terrorism across the mm. West and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we'll see the data on that in a minute. We'll go to the first one, just because, uh, for people who don't know, almost all terrorism in the world is Islamic. Mm. 90% here, with the next biggest group being unknown. The next biggest group after that is communist. Mm. Just in case you're wondering. But there you have it. I mean, there's a bar graph of just all the deadliest terror groups in the world. As you can see, you then get the unknown category and then the, the all other groups combined category is rather small by comparison. But that's the truth. You can be mad about it and you can mauled, but who cares? Grow up. We'll go to the next one here because if we check in on the West, because to be fair, who really cares about who's dying in Syria and Iraq to terrorism mm. if you're a British counterterrorism operative? Not my, not my jurisdiction. Yep. You know, not my chef's button. So we go to the incidents and deaths from terrorism in the West by ideology. This is 2007 to 2021. I've featured this before, but we're going to keep posting it until people learn the message. So you can see here, just broken down by far right, far left, separatists, religious terrorism, unclear, because that's also a category. And yeah, you can see there is some uptick in far right from about 2016, a little bit. And it kind of just dies. In 2021, it's not even a thing anymore. Mm. Whereas far left, yeah, no, that's, that's still around. That's common. That's not, that's not taken care of. And if you go forward to the next one, the only thing we could be uh, happy about, uh, you can see here, uh, incidents. So these aren't deaths. Instead, you can see far-left terrorism far outweighs far-right terrorism any given year in the West. It's just ridiculous. And if you go to the uh, next one here, we can see the fact... Oh, there should be another graph in there, but whatever. There's uh, just the fact that um, the thing we could be thankful of is far-left terrorism is very crap at killing people. That's, that's nice. They're just not successful at death. Are only successful as incidents. But going forward, because there is uh, someone who decided to uh, come out and say that, well, the report that's just come out stating some very naughty things, which we'll get to in a minute, is actually far right propaganda by <laughs> the government. Yeah, okay. This is Lizzie Dearden here, who uh, has a very big hard on for um, Romlin Tomlinson. Can't say his name because of Facebook. Yeah. I'm not kidding. She's written like a million articles about him. It's a bit weird. But she wrote here. This uh, list from the report omits the 16th of March 2019 Stanwell attack, where a white supremacist inspired by the Christchurch mosque shootings the previous day, uh, previous day before went out and killed some Muslims. I was like, okay. Well, if they are leaving this out, that would be wrong. If it mm. was actually in the purview. Except she's just lying. If you scroll up on this, John, so we can actually see what she was referring to. She's taken this paragraph and just cropped it to say that, you know, this guy's saying, here's a list of attacks. All of those are Islamic. And she says, how dare he say that all the attacks in 2019 were Islamic? That's because he don't. Let's go to the report itself, because this is where the uh, rumbling's going to start. He says here, But the facts clearly demonstrate that the most lethal threat in the last 20 years has come from Islamism. And this threat continues. 
Since this independent review of Prevent was commissioned in 2019, six terrorist attacks have blighted our nation. These took place at Fishmongers Hall, November 19, uh, Whitemore Prison, January 2020, Stratham, February 2020, Reading, June 2020, Southend, October 2021, Liverpool, and in addition, shortly before this report was completed, a British citizen held Jewish civilians hostage in a synagogue in Texas. All of these were of an Islamist nature. Yeah, but he is ignoring that last one, except that doesn't make any sense, um, because when you actually go and look at when the report was asked to be produced, we go to the next one, you can see it was in 16th of September 2019. So Lizzie did and doesn't know how to use a calendar. <laughs> That one mystery solved, in case you're wondering. I saw that going around hugely in left-wing forums. It's like, how can they do this? How can they ignore far-right terrorism? But they didn't. It wasn't in the purview. It started in September. So funnily enough, it doesn't include terrorism from March. Hmm. Why would it? Like, it's just dumb. But I had to go over that. But if we get to the actual upset people, every MP who is uh, upset at being told Islamic terrorism has something to do with Islam is mad. It's a really weird group of people. Because, I mean, like, no one denies that Christian terrorism has something to do with Christianity. Mm. Or that far-right terrorism has something to do with the far-right. Or maybe communist terrorism has something to do with communism. But, no, these folks are really annoyed about this. Found out why in a minute. This is a statement from the All-Party Party Parliamentary Group on British Muslims. A statement in here. Creating a hierarchy of extremism, fueled by ideology and political viewpoints, simply makes the problem worse and makes us all less safe. They're referring to the hierarchy of threat, so, the British government saying maybe the biggest threat in terms of terrorism is Islamic terrorism. That's making us all less safe. Because it's, it's political ideology of you to do that. I mean, yes, mm. in the sense of I want to find what the actual threats are. It's just true. But, but these are politicians. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny to see as well. They're just They can't even argue in a sufficient way of even slightly convincing. It's just how dare you mention it. If we go forward, there's another lady, my fervor, personal favorite, uh, Islamo leftist, Zara Sultana, who's just whining in here. Uh, she mentions in here that the guy in charge of the report once said Islam and Europe are the most terrifying problems of our future. Obviously referring to integration. Mm. It's not an anti-Muslim statement, mm. but whatever. Amnesty International is also whining about this for people who like Amnesty International. Um, if you didn't know, yeah, the full leftists who just endlessly take one side of the debate, which is the if it's right-wingers in trouble, we don't care. Uh, see Count Dankula for that one. Well, let's get to the actual report, because uh, this is where the truth comes in, and the truth isn't fun, to say the least. Mm. So, they write in here, Prevent's first objective to tackle the causes of radicalization and respond to ideological challenges of terrorism is not being sufficiently met. I don't know if you noticed, but yeah, I mean, when you have constant Islamic terrorism going on, successfully, mm. not to mention the unsuccessful attacks from various groups, then, yeah, we're not doing well as a country. Prevent is not doing enough to counter non-violent Islamist extremism. Prevent has a double standard when dealing with extreme right-wing and Islamist terrorism. Prevent takes an expansive approach to right-wing terrorism. It's a very polite way of saying that they list things that aren't terrorism as terrorism. Mm. We uh, Josh actually did a report a while back in which uh, the government released their statistics on who was being referred to Prevent for far-right terrorism or Islamist terrorism. Do you want to guess who was in the far-right camp? What kind of demographics made up the far-right in the UK? 11-year-old boys online. No, not quite, actually. It was the exact opposite. It was pensioners. Right. The the British pensioners of the country, they're all about to go out and... Yeah, no. Yeah. Terrorism comes from young men. Yeah. Overwhelmingly. But they're all the referrals were from pensioners, which but, just tells you that they've not got it right. The... The, far, the investigation into the far right in this country really is to balance the investigation into Islamic fundamental fundamentalism, terrorism in the country. It's a, it's a straw man, the far right investigations. It's just to balance out the figures. It's entirely media invented. Yes, like, yeah. we need to investigate this because the media says so. Yeah. Not because the data actually shows, yeah. do we have a problem here? And this is the government's own words. I'm not even saying this at this point. I can actually just quote them. They say they take an expansive approach to the extreme right wing. Capturing a variety of influences that, at times, has been so broad it has included mildly controversial or provocative forms of mainstream right wing leading commentary that have no meaningful connection to terrorism or radicalization. However, with Islamism, Prevent takes a much more narrow approach, centred around prescribed organisations, ignoring the contribution of non-violent Islamist narratives and networks to terrorism. 
So when it comes to the state in my country mm. policing the right, they decide that uh, there's far right terrorism. Okay, cool. Like that's that's an accurate place for you to be working. And then also anyone who says anything mildly controversial, that's basically on the road to terrorism. Great, great, fantastic. Glad I live in this world. And they specifically only use that on the right, mm. as mentioned. Never with any other group. He says, I was consistently unable to determine how many prevent funded civil uh, society organizations, CSOs, and community of projects are achieving impact. This is where we get to the just dumb things, mm. which is fun. I found there were inadequate mechanisms to evaluate individual projects. Funding too often goes towards generic projects dealing with community cohesion and hate crime, mm. which we're all used to at this point. Yep. Do we got to give money to this organization. Why? Well, they're fighting hate. What are they doing? Fighting hate. How are they doing it? I don't know. Stop asking questions. Just give me the cash. Of particular concern, I discovered that some CSOs have promoted extremist narratives. Great. Including statements that appear to be sympathetic to the Taliban. As a core principle, the government must cease to engage with those aligned with extremism, which is a real understatement. Mm. We're actually funding pro-Taliban speakers in the UK. As, as a way of countering... Te te okay. I was disturbed by the presence of anti-Semitism within the channel cases I observed. This is the fact that basically, yeah, all the cases getting are anti-Semites. Big mm. shock. Individuals discussed at channel panels tended to harbor violent and fanatical beliefs about Jews, often expressing intent to kill, assault, or blow up members of the Jewish community. Yeah, who, who could have seen that coming? Mm. Uh, we're looking into Islamic terrorism. What do we find? Um, not, not fond of Israel, so... <laughs> It is clear that Prevent is out of kilter with the rest of the counterterrorism system and the UK's counterterrorism threat as a picture. Islamist terrorism represents the primary terrorist threat to this country, consistently accounting for the majority of terrorist attack plots, both carried out and thwarted by intelligence services. He says, at present, 80% of all counterterrorism police networks live investigations are Islamist. 10% mm. are extreme right wing. And yet at the same time, 22% of all referrals are for Islamism. So Only 22%? 80% of all terrorism yeah. that actually has to be investigated, mm. thwarted or successful, is Islamist. Only 22% of people actually being looked at mm. in the prevent strategy are Islamists. Mm. The rest of them are not. Right, wow. It's a real weird situation. He goes into it. I'll quickly just uh, summarize what he says for the sake of time. But essentially, the vast majority of people who get sent to prevent are just mentally ill. Mm. Like, they're not extreme white. They're not extreme left. They're not Islamists. They're, they're listed as uh, mixed, unclear, or unstable referrals. Mm. Meaning that we they don't actually have any threat of terrorism. There's no political motive for anything. They're just mentally ill. But we don't have a mental health service anymore. So mm. basically a terrorist. Good job. Great. In my assessment, Prevent is carrying the weight for mental health services. Vulnerable people who do not necessarily pose a terrorism risk are being referred to Prevent... Uh, because there's no other support. It's like, great, fantastic. So yeah. that's that's part of the reason our counterterrorism just doesn't work. This we're not we're not used as a counterterrorism force, they're saying. I'm not satisfied that sufficient precaution is being applied to rehabilitation work either. As the murderous fishmonger hall attack of twenty nineteen showed, optimism bias can have tragic consequences. Do you remember that attack? Yeah. So for people who don't know, um a local chap joins Al Qaeda, as you do, yeah. I suppose. Uh, started planning how to blow up Parliament, synagogues, and also the Stock Exchange. Mm. Gone full joker, I guess. Was sent to prison for eight years, rehabilitated, and then came out and murdered people, including one of the people he took a picture with, showing that he was rehabilitated. He'd just been to a probation event that morning. Yeah. Well, he'd been, he'd been rehabilitated. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, nah. There is a concerted campaign by some as well, including a number of Islamist groups, to undermine and delegitimize the prevent strategy through the spread of disinformation, misinformation, half-truths. Yeah, this is where I come back to my favorite MP. Because routinely, I mean, she tweets things like this. Prevent is being used to police legitimate speech, protest, and dissent. It should be scrapped. Referring to the fact that prevent went after disproportionately Muslims. Mm. I was like, okay. Well, if the terrorism is disproportionately Islamic, then yes, mm. that, that is going to be the suspects. And then, if we go to the other uh, link here, I just noted out some other funny things. There's just uh, the fact here, it is worth reinstating the Islamist terrorism is currently the largest terror threat facing the United Kingdom. Like, he just keeps posting it, 
mm. in this report. And uh, I think that's the reason why I f there's so much pushback to this, is the guy writing it has just been like, stop being dumb. Like, we actually yeah. have a problem. Yeah. And that's not allowed. He does write here, however. Prevent does not seek to engage and consult with extreme right-wing sympathizers, and it recognizes extreme right-wing grievance narratives as being a key part of the problem, as previously mentioned and explored in detail later on in the report, the same cannot be said of Prevent's treatment of non-violent Islamist radicalizing influences. So when it comes to the far right, if they've got a grievance mm. that you could try and tackle, you don't take any attention to that. But if an Islamist has a grievance, you go, well, well okay, well, maybe we can debate with him and mm. do something for this uh, group here. Great, cool. If we move forward, we go to the next link. They're also spending their time just wasting time on nonsense. This is just a list of uh, stupid things they were doing, which I found funny. So there's one uh, analysis product on right-wing terrorism and extremist activity online with reference books from mainstream British conservative commentators as key cultural nationalist ideological texts. The same document listed key texts for white nationalists as historic works of Western philosophical and literary canon. They're like, yeah, if you read Aristotle, you're going to become a white nationalist. Yeah, nah. This is... Terrible work. Also, the mainstream conservative commentators. Do you want to guess who? You? No. <laughs> Douglas Murray. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you read Douglas Murray, that's um, you're on the road to terrorism, yeah. according to the British state. There's also another analysis product I mentioned here, which discussed a cohort of social media users. It termed actively patriotic and proud, listed a prominent conservative politician and former member of the government as being among figures associated with far-right sympathetic audiences and Brexit. Remember, this is the counter-terrorism unit. Mm. It was like, yeah, you know those, uh, those conservative MPs? That's too far-right. Conservative MPs are too far-right. I, I mean, if you want to get an image of just how weird the UK has become, I mean, when you're assessing conservative MPs as basically neo-Nazis, and you're running the counter-terrorism of the country. I mean, yeah, everyone here has lost their minds. I actually don't think they believe any of this. Think so? Th this, is, this is all about equity. If we have bad Muslim guys, well, equity tells us there must be bad white Christian guys as well. And so we must be, we have to look, we have to split, prevent into them equally. And... These people, it's all about equity. It, it really is. I don't think people who work there believe any of this at all. I think a, a significant section of them do, because you've got to think of who ends up there. And it's kind of individuals who go to university, get brainwashed full of nonsense, and then end up working for counterterrorism. I think a lot of them do get guilt tripped. Not to mention we have seen, I think it's from MI5 and MI6, we went through it. They have diversity uh, quotas now yep. for interns. They have special internships where white people can't apply, for example. That's the norm. Yeah, that's the office culture. So the no, I, I'm sure they believe what they're doing. I don't believe that they believe that the threat of violence is the same. Maybe, but the funniest one at the bottom here is uh, someone wrote a product about far right radicalization online and named a highly popular American podcast host. They don't say which one. Yeah, I, I take a guess in the comments. I guess claiming that this individual has been described as a gateway to the far right. It was suggested that he hosted a disproportionate number of influences from the far right of the political spectrum, although no examples were provided. Mm. It's Joe Rogan. That's I, who I'd be guessing. I'm putting well. a bounty on it being Joe Rogan. Yeah. And what's funny, and the reason I mentioned like the culture is because that's a very common leftist meme mm. of like, don't you know Joe Rogan's a gateway to the far right? Mm. He's had this guy and this guy on. So no one cares. But that's what the counterterrorism policing is like now. Actual left wing memers. If you scroll down on this, there's a whole bunch of uh, other examples in that thread that people might find funny. So, like, the first one being that uh, Counterterrorism was running a female Muslim online magazine that contained nothing but stupid stuff like horoscopes. Mm. But they still ran it. Because, you know, that's that's Counterterrorism. There's uh, them funding the Taliban, which was the one just below that, if you scroll back up a little bit. Which, you know, money must spent. How do you, how do you counter the Taliban? Fund them. <laughs> it's, it's what, what we need to do with... Uh, this is with all government projects, when you're dealing with taxpayers' money and you're funding these sort of projects, you probably already have what a successful project looks like. So this is what we're, these are our aims and objectives. So if we're successful, this is what we'll achieve. Civil servants also need to write another document 
to state what failure looks like. Yeah. Because I'm sure if they did, all these, by their own words, would be failures. And then we can hold people to account. Does that actually count to terrorism? No. I think I, it's a pretty good standard of, like, is this yeah. failing? Uh, the next one here is just them listing something, which is really an insight. You may remember um, Roland Tomlinson once got famous. He was put in charge of uh, UKIP's advisory board or, or whatever. He was an no. advisor to Gerald Batten <clears throat> on prison reform, mm. and everyone lost their mind. And Gerald Batten's response was, well, he's been to prison. Keep yeah. telling me there's a real extremist problem there, mm. so I want to know what's going on. Mm. Turns out he was entirely right. Yeah. This is the government's own wording, in which they just... I'm not even going to go through all the bullet points here. You can do it in your own time. Which is just them mentioning, yeah, the prisons are even worse than he's been saying. Mm. Like the, the level of radicalization there. But we've known this for decades. None of this is not new. That's not new. It's we've just, known this. It's just out in the open now. Yeah. It's like, I've, I've done the report. Trust me, it's real. Please stop. If you go down there, there is uh, one more I think is rather funny. So this is where they just gave £10,000 to Iranian-backed extremists because of COVID. <laughs> just, why not? Yeah. Eh, I've got nothing else to do today. So I just give 10 grand to, to people you know to be Iranian extremists. Neat. Well, to be fair, the Iranian extremists who will be Shiite, Shiite extremists hate the Sunni extremists. So if they could knock a couple of thousand of them off for 10 grand. It's, it's a really funny way of looking at it, which is just like, what if we fund the Taliban and the Iranian government and Kill then each they other. fight? Yes. Yeah, that, that's not going to come back to bite us in the ass. <laughs> Do you know that's actually the strategy of the Pakistani intelligence services? I'm it, not joking. It, it, it was the official um, thing for, for the British Empire. It's called, it's called divide and conquer. Sure. That's how we've run the world. For the Pakistanis, it's really funny, though, because they fund every Islamist group that's next door to them. Yeah. Well, who's next door to you when they take over? Oh, wait. Yeah. Now you have an Islamic extremist as a neighbor. Yeah. Um, you may have noticed after the Taliban took over, there were they, even the president, sorry, the prime minister of Pakistan gave a speech. He said they'd thrown off the shackles of American imperialism. Yeah, guess who's bombing each other right now? Yeah. The Taliban and the Pakistani yeah. government. It's just like, uh, well, enjoy it. It's your world. And we'll just go forward here. If we go through a couple of links forward, uh, we can also see that there was a, a uh, imam who's being paid by the government to promote the Taliban, uh, promote anti-Semitism, and also host terror suspects as guests at his events, which is... Good job. Well, he must went. And then we go to the last link here as well, which is uh, the main thing that pissed me off and the reason I think that this is sincere and the idiocy. Listed as to one of the reasons why the British government is so bad at actually countering far-right terrorism and instead spends its time chasing after people like Douglas Murray mm. in their reports, is if you can clue on the first image there, it's because they're using Hope Not Hate as a source. <laughs> For people who don't know, Hope Not Hate is just a left-wing communist organisation. If you think I'm being hyperbolic by calling them communist... If we go forwards, this is their uh, head of research, Matthew Collins. Uh, there you go. This is Facebook posts. My position, the same as the party I belong to, the Communist Party. And in case you think that's some kind of uh, fake screenshot or something, I'd take a load of screenshots of his account just to make the point that this is real if you keep mm. going. We can see those screenshots. There's the Communist Party uh, of Great Britain supporters groups. And there he is posting stuff, working for Hope Not Hate. It's pretty easily findable. Yeah, I would have thought the current terrorism could have found it. But if you go back on that first link, the thing they're whining about there is that uh, Douglas Murray and what is it, uh, Malene Phillips were saying that maybe bringing the entire world to England is not a great idea. Mm. Last link, first image, please. Then uh, you can see that that's what Hope Not Hate are whining about. That's not the last link. So if you go to the last link, first image, then you'll see that. There you are. In which, yeah. If, if you wanted to rely on someone's worldview to teach you what far-right terrorism is, don't ask a communist. They can't be trusted. Don't know why I need to say that. But I went through that report thought it was uh, important. I think mm. people should know. And in case you're wondering why the intelligence services sometimes are really dumb, it's because they're doing really dumb things. They're just humans. And a lot of them apparently fall for communist propaganda like this mm. consistently. 